Hello, this is Stanley with QuickTipKing.com and today I'm not bringing you a tutorial, I'm bringing you a box opening and not just any box, the box for the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K. This is Blackmagic's update to the Ursa Mini, take out the word Pro 4.6K and it's got some cool new features. Um, so let's get to it, let's not delay. Um, I've already taken the plastic off so it won't be awkward uh, when I open it. Um, but uh, I'm really excited to be uh, uh, getting this camera. Whew, all right, here we go, first part. All right, welcome. How nice of them. Let's see this. I'm gonna make this slow and painful, so. Inside here, they have a little message. Thank you for selecting Black Magic, And they have the manual on a, a SD card, which I think is cool. I think it's cool that they do that now. All right, I'm just gonna set that over there. Next, they have DaVinci Resolve Studio 12.5, and I'm guessing this is the dongle. Okay, yep, oh, another SD card with the manual. Um, and then, whoop, this is live, people. All right, and then the uh, thumb drive right here uh, with uh, DaVinci Resolve. You have to plug this in, as far as I know, to be able to uh, have the pro version of Resolve. I'm gonna set this off to the side here. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we can take a look inside. This camera is pretty small, but also pretty, pretty mighty, pretty heavy. Um, let's see here. We, I'll take out the small stuff first. So we've got the little uh, side grip, black magic, and what looks like uh, the link control uh, to allow this little part of the handle to work, uh, the record and shutter. Um, and then let's see what we have over here. I'm guessing this is a uh, power supply. Uh, something to note um, is that the power supply does not come with one of these little Edison cables. I found that out the hard way. So if you don't have one of these Edison cables with this little thing, you're gonna need to go get one if you buy an Ursa Mini Pro. Maybe even the Ursa Mini. I don't, I don't know. I don't have that one. But that's something that I was told when I picked this up. They were like, you're going to need this. Let me see if I can open this thing without ripping it. There we go. So we've got the power supply with the standard uh, um, XLR 4-pin right there. And then uh, I've got these cables to connect uh, a battery adapter. All right. Now it's time to take the camera out of the box. Carefully, carefully, there we go. All right, I'm gonna set the box down here. All right, here it is. So, some of the new features with the Ursa Mini Pro versus the Ursa Mini uh, 4K and 4.6K is a lot of what you see right here. Um, there's, um, first off, there's the ND filter wheel, which is brand new. Um, one is clear, as far as I understand. We can actually take this off. Let's see if we can see the ND filter wheel moving without getting this too dusty. Uh, I, it comes with the EF mount, uh, Canon EF. Uh, let's see if we can see it. Yes, I can see it moving inside there. Let's see if the camera can see it. There we go. You can see the filter wheel moving inside. It, it puts, um, different ND filters based on the number. Uh, it's, it has a stuff here, in case you're confused, it tells you right here on the side. One is clear, uh, two is two stops difference, uh, three is four stops, and four is six stops. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close this up for now so I don't get anything dirty. Don't wanna get my new camera dirty. Um, and um, there are some other features here as well. Let's, um, actually this little uh, LCD screen here, gives you readouts of what's happening on your camera. Uh, and then uh, these volume control knobs are pretty sweet as well. So if you're operating with the shoulder rig um, and the eyepiece, you could, you'd have the camera here on your shoulder and you'd be able to just reach over, feel the buttons and move them and change them. Um, okay, let's open this thing up. Ooh, very stiff. Very, ooh man, this is almost more stiff than I, I would have expected, but that's how you know it's built well, I think, just how stiff it is. Uh, we've got protective plastic. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that. It feels so good. 
to remove it. <laughs> All right, so probably the biggest thing to check out here is uh, uh, the different card readers, and hopefully there's enough light going on here. Let's see if I can find a good spot. Okay, so check out the uh, different, um, the new SD card slot reader in here. Now, originally the uh, Ursa Mini just had two compact flash slots, but now they've added two SD cards. Now, I was uh, able to do a test uh, earlier with an Ursa Mini Pro, and these cards, believe it or not, can record all the way up to 4K, um, even with these cards. And they are way cheaper, way, way, way cheaper than uh, Compact Flash 2.0. So that's a huge uh, plus right there. I could even shoot in 4K in slow-mo. It was only up to 40 frames per second, but I was still shooting in slow-mo. And um, uh, in 2K, I was shooting 48 uh, easily. Um, and so I'm kind of excited about that. Oh man, I'm just admiring. I'm admiring the build. I like, I love how it's built. Let's check this out. This is kind of a cooling fan down here. And they also have more cooling up here to keep it cool because it's working hard. This is a full uh, metal body here. It's not plastic. It doesn't feel cheap in any way. Um, and uh, it shouldn't with how much you're, you know, you're paying for it. So um, here's, oh, I love this. There's a high frame rate button right here on the side, HFR, high frame rate. So you can do your high frame rates right away. All right, now that I have a power supply plugged in, I also wanna show you a little bit about this hand piece. Um, there is a length control. Uh, the record buttons and these buttons here won't actually work um, unless you plug the link in. So the, the part that goes into the handle is kind of hidden back here. And that can be a little bit difficult to find maybe your first time. Uh, if you have it on the shoulder rig, which I'll show you later on, um, it is likely much easier to find that. But that goes from here to this little thing right there. It plugs in right there so it'll allow you to use these buttons. Okay, let's uh, open this up and let's put an SD card in there. The first thing you'll want to do is, uh, by default, it's on CFast when it, when it arrives. It's on the little tiny CFast setting. So you may be putting an SD card in and you may get frustrated, but just look for this little thing and flip it to SD. All right, I've got, again, I've got these SanDisk 64s, uh, 95 megabits per second uh, cards. I'm gonna take this one out. And uh, I believe it is sticker facing you. Let's try this out, Let's see if it goes in. There we go, nice and snug. Now, I wish there was some kind of cover because I feel a little bit weird about the amount of dust that is likely to get into these other cards. I feel like buying SD cards or and a compact flash card just to stick in there so that there's no dust is what I feel like doing because uh, it just makes me nervous. All right, so here we go. Let's power it on. I'm using this power switch right here and we're booting up. There we are. It's alive. All right, so right now, um, I played around with it while the camera was off a little bit, so I've got it in some different settings. Uh, let me turn off high frame rate. So I am currently in, let's see here. I'm gonna hit the menu. I'm currently in ProRes 422 2K 16 by nine. Um, and um, let's see how much space that gives me on a 64. It gives me about 70 minutes um, to do 24P. Now you can, easily change stuff just by touching the uh, sensor up there. So I'm gonna switch it to 2398, which is what most TV and broadcasts and news things like. Um, you can go 25, 2997, 30p, 50, and that's about it there in 2K. But no one cares about 2K. Let's, let's check out 4.6K. So again, I'm in 422. Uh, ProRes and 4.6K. So let's check this out here. So at 23.98, let's see here. It tells me 12 minutes on a 64 gigabyte card. So buy yourself a lot of cards if you're planning on shooting in 60, uh, if you're planning on shooting in 4K, because it is pretty space hungry. Um, let's see even now. Now I'm going to actually show you for real the high frame rate button. Um, let's go ahead and press right here, high frame rate and it will toggle it on the screen. Uh, you can see it up there, frames per second, 40. You can just tap on that 
this is 4K, and so you can change the, it goes up to 40 to this S, whoop, 13, you can even go slow if you want. And um, high speed frame rate, let's put it, oh sorry, I pressed right there, so we're on 40. Okay, that still gives me seven minutes of record time. I'm gonna use my little thumb control here. So, um, something else that my cameraman wanted me to mention was that the fact that there's no handle up top and that it's fairly symmetrical with the bottom down here makes it uh, extra easy to attach to a Steadicam rig. Or, uh, right. or a jib or any kind of Steadicam rig because you can mount it from the top or the bottom very, very easily and there's no, no weird balance shift that's gonna happen because of a handle. All right, cool, so we got to check out some of that. Let's open this uh, shoulder rig really quick to see what's in there. And uh, I unfortunately could not get the eyepiece just yet because um, it was a little bit back ordered. So probably sometime next week I'll be getting that in. All right, so let's open this up. We've got our instruction booklet here and about how to attach it. Looks um, easy enough here um, because it's, uh, you just looks like two screws there and two screws for the handle. All right, so let me get this out of the way. So it looks like uh, here it is, shoulder rig right there. It's ready to put um, some rail system in, it's be able to tighten that up. The Sony base plate. And then um, it also has the Sony base plate, which if you buy this, you also need the Sony base plate. <laughs> so, so that's something you need to be prepared for as well. So. Um, so yay, I got the shoulder rig. I guess it does have a big fat screw if you wanted. You could put a plate there, but why would you when you have a Sony base plate? All right, um, and then here's the handle, um, which um, actually feels, which was, I think this is the right way to hold it. Uh, once you get the screws out up here on the front, so I have it soft here, and you hold it there. It's probably the right place to balance it, right there. Okay, and then here's the arm extension. So when you've got it on your shoulder, you know, you don't want the hand grip back here. That, that would be totally uncomfortable and super awkward to try to hold. So you're gonna attach this down here and you're gonna have the handle coming out right there. Uh, so that is just about everything. Um, now normally I do tutorials, so if you're interested in Final Cut Pro tutorials, please check out the rest of my YouTube page. And um, with, enough th with enough thumbs up, you may just see some resolve tutorials as well. All right. Thank you for watching.